What is going on guys, Rewinds here, and in this video, I'm going to be bringing you guys my review for Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Manga Chapter number 14. So, I did post in my community tabs, uh, you know, I want to say a couple days ago, saying that this video would be out a lot sooner. But, uh, unfortunately, some unexpected personal stuff came up, so I didn't get a chance to record this video till now. Um, so here I am still talking about it. And I would still definitely love to hear, of course, what you guys thought of the chapter 2 in the comments below. So definitely let me know that. Um, but let's start this off. So we have a Kashin Koji solo cover page, which I'm a fan of. I really like the design. Cover pages, I still don't think we've missed on any of them yet. The chapter itself is titled Duty. And pretty much we start out with an interrogation scene. We got Konohamaru and Ibiki in a room with Boruto, where Boruto... Uh, awakens and pretty much you know Konohamaru asks him you know or not ask him he tells him hey you've come too and pretty much he tells him about the cuffs and how they won't break and how he won't be able to perform jutsu Boruto you know ask about the enemy and he also asks if everyone else is okay Konohamaru pretty much tells him that everyone is okay and that the enemies just ran off so um, that's kind of how that scene begins. So that kind of sets the tone of the chapter of, okay, we're going to be getting, you know, this interrogation happening in this chapter. And I'm also really glad, you know, just one thing I want to point out already, I'm really glad they brought back Ibiki for this because, you know, this is a specialty. I like seeing old characters come back in this series, um, especially for when it makes sense, you know, for them to have a purpose in the series, which I feel like we could use some of the characters a little more often from... Uh, back in the day, they don't have to be around, you know, all the time, but I feel like you can bring them back. Speaking of returning characters, we also had Sakura return this chapter. Although it was only for a page, um, it was acknowledged that Inojin is going to be alright. And um, pretty much that Himawari's ability also healed Inojin to a great extent. So that just shows you what kind of power Himawari is about to have, especially when she masters more of this down. The potential is honestly insane with what she's doing. But yeah, a little um, Sakura appearance as well. Cool to see. Um, then we get back to the interrogation scenes where Konohamaru starts the questions up. And um, we have the two elders listening in uh, from their own area. And you also have Amado listening in. And pretty much the first, oh, also Shikamaru listening into it. Pretty much the first question is who attacked and what do they got to do with Sarada and Himawari. And before we can get an answer to that, we actually cut over to Ida, Damon, and Kawaki. And Ida's pretty much warning um, uh, Kawaki that what would you do if Boruto, you know, tells the truth and all that. And uh, Kawaki says it won't change anything because no matter what Boruto says, you know, it's not going to change anything and that he's pretty much blaming Boruto for Lord Seventh disappearing. So pretty much Kawaki is completely gone into a mindset where he thinks it's 100% Boruto's fault that Naruto's not around and why he's disappeared. And he says it's because of Boruto's true nature, which is a dangerous Otsutsuki that could rampage at any moment. He says again that killing him is the only option, whether it's now or later. But before that, they need the info on the Shinjus. So, um, that's the only reason Kawaki didn't take him out in the last chapter. You know, just for Intel's uh, purposes. But, that just shows you as well that, um, in general, uh, Kawaki seems to be blaming Boruto on all this. And, uh, that's an interesting way to go about it for sure. I'm sure a lot of people aren't too happy about that. Uh, but that's just his mindset, you know. He'd rather have Naruto locked away and disappeared. And he says he's only having that because Boruto exists. So for him to release Naruto, Boruto would have to not exist anymore. So, yeah. And um, so pretty much the explanation starts coming through from Boruto. And Konohamaru responds by saying, Divine tree people, people, you know, divine tree people who have self-consciousness and 
Boruto pretty much expands on that by saying, you know, there's some base models to certain people, like Hidari's base model is Sasuke, and Matsuri's base model is Moegi, and Matsuri's someone that hasn't popped up in to attack yet, but Boruto does reveal to Konohamaru, he says, be careful, Master Konohamaru, because Matsuri's eager to devour you. So... Then we actually get some explanations from Amado here because he's listening in on this. So he talks about the initial purpose of the Ten Tails and then he goes, now that they've acquired intelligence, this is what's causing them to expand. They're gaining, you know, intellectual curiosity is what he said. So they're pretty much trying to devour these people for information. And the main targets from Aborto's got so far seems to be Sarda, Himawari, and Konohamaru. Meanwhile, Borto actually reveals something big here, and I actually do like this because we didn't have this as an explanation before. Um, Jura's the special case because unlike the others, he has no prototype. He's apparently a direct incarnation of the Ten Tails himself, and he's the one, you know, taking charge of the crisis. But that's you know really good stuff in my opinion to kind of explain where jura came from and pretty much how you know he's been around i am a fan of that explanation i think it makes sense and um you know it fits the leader of this group for sure and uh I, there is you know i'm gonna talk about the other divine tree person that's you know coming towards the end of this chapter too uh at you know towards the end of my review uh but i just thought of something uh target wise that i'm going to discuss there too uh, moving forward from that though um borto does say in short that if we can defeat jura this planet would stop being in danger because jura's the leader and borto says i mean konohamaru says how are you so certain about that how do you know these things how'd you figure it out and uh borto's kind of quiet about it but um, Konohamaru says, answer me, Boruto, our decision whether to trust you or not depends on it. Boruto says, I have a source, but sorry, I can't reveal his identity. Um, and Boruto expands by saying, he asked me not to reveal it for his own safety, which is valid. Konohamaru says, it's not acceptable because you can't expect us to believe a traitor's tale without a single ounce of evidence. Um, Boruto responds by saying back at you because most of you guys want me dead. The only reason I'm alive is because of intel. Isn't that right? And that's when one of the elders pitch pitches in. Honestly, I don't know the elders' names. Um, I have said in my spoiler videos too, I'm not a fan of these two elders. I personally do hope that uh, their time is up in Boruto at some point. I'm surprised they're even around in this involve. You know, so far, you would think by now they'd be in a retirement home or something if they were alive, but I guess not. Um, he pretty much responds by saying, don't get cocky with us. Um, whatever, whoever, whoever, you know, these monsters desire, what we do for Konoha must not change. Any hostile elements must be eliminated using all means necessary. That includes you, Boruto, regardless of what you say, don't think you're making it out of that room alive. So then the other elder pitches in and she says, so given that, speak with caution. Based on your words, we could at least offer you a painless death. Tell us, Borto, why ever did you lay a hand on Uzumaki Naruto, Lord Seventh? And then, right then, we start getting a um, pretty much like a flashback for Shikamaru for that conversation he had with Boruto a couple chapters back. And Shikamaru actually can't remember the word omnipotence here, which just shows you exactly the effect Boruto was talking about here of the ability. So, um, pretty much he can't remember that, but he does remember some of the conversation and he remembers that he trusts Boruto. But he's convinced in his head that he is Uzumaki Boruto and he says he has the memory of deciding to believe that. So that was a great action by, you know, Boruto and Shikamaru back then. It just shows you how smart Shikamaru is too because Boruto told him like, hey, you're going to forget this. But then Shikamaru was like, you know what? I can try remembering this other detail instead and maybe that'll help me remember. And clearly that idea worked out. So that leads Shikamaru to the conclusion that he can't let Boruto die. And 
Boruto goes back to the conversation to respond to the elder by saying, I didn't kill him. Lord Seventh is alive. His wife is too. They're both somewhere safe. And I did say this in my spoiler video too, but it does hurt me to hear Boruto say his wife too. Because, you know, Boruto's doing this, of course, to protect Kawaki here and his identity. But it does hurt to see because, you know, that's Boruto's mom. So he can't even call her that in this scene. Um, so... The elder, um, well, not even the elder, uh, Konohamaru and Ibiki are surprised to hear that, you know, Naruto might be alive. And then the elder, she says, of all the things you could say, you're saying they're both somewhere safe. And where is that? Why do they need to hide? Boruto says, I'm not telling. We cut over to Kawaki, who's just looking on, um, from his area, uh, and then the other elder is smiling now. He says, you drop such a tall tale now. I'm speechless. Boruto says, I just don't intend to reveal anything to you. I haven't told a single lie. That elder calls him insolent brat. You seek a painful death. And then we have Ibiki pulling up on Boruto now saying, good, good. That's the spirit. We're finally heading in the direction of a real interrogation. Hmm, Boruto? And then in the meantime, we have Shikamaru contact Ino. Trying to set up a direct transmission with Boruto to communicate there. But this time, Ino is not really working with Shikamaru here. Um, she's gonna, she's pretty much saying, because it's breaking the rules and all that. And she's saying, sorry, but I can't do this anymore. And she just, you know, she has her own doubts about Boruto. So she's following that route here. Um, it makes sense where she's coming from, I think. Especially since she just saw Ino Jean hurt and everything, too. Um, so it makes sense, but she probably would have listened if it was a Hokage order, but I guess Shikamaru did not want to give that. We cut back over to the interrogation, and this is one of my favorite panels of the chapter, probably my favorite. Uh, it's one where Boruto's just looking straight on, you know, unfazed while Ibiki's asking a question of, if Lord Seventh is safe, tell us where he is. If you can't, your claim isn't going to fly. And you'll die disgraced as a Hokage killing traitor. He then slams Boruto's face down into the table after he gets no response. He also says, you see Boruto? I've been itching to pummel the crap out of you for killing Naruto these last three years. And this is also one of my favorite pages because Boruto responds by saying, it must be nice to have so much free time. And Ibiki responds to that with a punch. So physical torture is going on. I also really like what Ibiki says about how he's been itching to, you know, pummel Boruto, especially for killing Naruto. Because we gotta remember, these guys just think that this is the Hokage killer, Nar you know, of Naruto, the guy who was beloved to, you know, a lot of the village, especially now that he's, you know, been Hokage and then, you know, the war hero and everything just tracing back. Um, everybody cared for Naruto a lot, especially at this point of the story. So I can see why they would be hurt. And Ibiki also, you know, has no Naruto all the way back from his first tuning exam. So when you think about that and you think about the effect that could have on someone, even like a side character like Ibiki, you know, a character we don't even see all the time. It just shows you how important of a character Naruto truly is and was. So, um, you know, Boruto just glares at him. Uh, Ibiki says, we'll see how long that glare lasts. And Shikamaru puts a stop to the physical torture. He says, we're going to use Venom instead. He says, to summon Mitsuki, Konohamaru advises against it because uh, Mitsuki has, you know, that personal grudge against uh, Boruto and, and, you know, a murderous aura towards him. Shikamaru does convince him, though. He says, it's okay. I'll take the fall if anything goes bad. We cut over to Ida and Kawaki, and Ida and Kawaki are... Now discussing, pretty much Ida's telling Kawaki that Borto doesn't look like he's going to rat you out. And that kind of shocks Kawaki a little bit. And it also surprises Damon why he's not revealing that either. Mitsuki pulls up. Shikamaru actually hands him something and tells him, uh, well, the handoff isn't too obvious, but uh, we have a little panel that shows it. But... Um, he says, remember we're Shinobi and this is a mission. Control your emotions and perform your duty. Do you understand? And Mitsuki goes in. Uh, Konohamaru gives Mitsuki like a little rundown too of keeping it calm. And Bo that he can't kill Boruto. We need him for information. And then Boruto 
He says, hey, Mitsuki, are you still idiotically searching for your son? And Mitsuki goes into sage mode immediately, charges at Boruto, pins him against the wall. Konohamaru starts screaming at Mitsuki and starts making his way over. Ibiki tries pulling Mitsuki off, and Mitsuki's just calling Boruto an ungrateful traitor. But he sneaks by one of his snakes to go and get Boruto out of there. He also whispers to Boruto that your stuff is in the West Wing security office and that there are two guards there. So he gives him the information of where stuff is. Um, and then Konohamaru is pretty much saying, damn, I warned you this would happen. And Borto then escapes. He says, just to be clear, I don't see any of you guys as enemies. And I'm okay with sharing intel as needed, which I'll decide when. And how you use it will be entirely up to you. And then Borto, you know, gets out of the cuffs. And then pretty much and goes back to and gets his stuff. Pretty much appears over there, tells him, sorry, it's not your guys' fault. And disappears from there. Meanwhile, uh, Ibiki's blaming Amado for not making the cuffs right, whereas Konohamaru is thinking, what happened now? Because he's like, Mitsuki unlocked them? No, it can't be. Only Ibiki and I and Lord Eighth knew the four-digit code. Um, and besides that, Mitsuki has no reason to help Boruto. But then we get that little flashback panel of Boruto, not Boruto, of Mitsuki getting the code from Shikamaru. So now we're heading, you know, towards the chapter's end where the elders are talking about this is a big blunder and Mitsuki pretty much apologizes to Konohamaru and Konohamaru lets it slide by saying it's okay because Shikamaru signed off on it so that's the only reason Mitsuki really got excused here too then we pretty much cut over to the Hokage's office at the Hokage's office Sarada and Sumire come charging in to see what happened with Boruto's interrogation Shikamaru lets them know that Boruto escaped Shikamaru seems, you know, a little stressed at this moment because he is smoking a cigar at that time. And uh, right then, we get word uh, someone's contacted Shikamaru, I think through transmission, because it pretty much said Lord 8. We received an emergency call from Lord Conqueror of the Village of the Sand. And Shikamaru says to connect him directly. He says, it's been a while, Shikamaru. Sorry to bother you. And then... Uh, Shikamaru responds by saying, what's going on, Konkuro? And then uh, Konkuro looks a little stressed in this uh, panel while he's saying, garo has been taken down and his adopted son, Shinki, too. Shinki got that tree affliction as well, but fortunately, they're both alive. I'll explain more later, but forgive my bluntness, but could you help lend us a hand? And then on the final page, we see a Shinki divine tree shinju creature whatever you want to call him emerge and i think you have jura saying finally awake how do you feel ryu so it seems like the shinki um shinju is going to be called ryu that's the name and just going based off of you know uh simple guessing and logic i'm gonna say that this Shinju's target is going to be Gara because that's, you know, Shinki's dad. And Gara is still left alive at the moment. So I think Gara is going to be targeted here. And this is going to be a way also to bring Gara back into the story. Which I think is a great idea. Especially because I feel like we need more of these Kages back involved in the story. Um, especially since these are events that are probably going to be affecting the whole world with the everything that's going on with the Shinju so uh, I think next chapter we're gonna get a flashback of what happened exactly in this sand village attack who attacked it and how exactly they went down and then after that I think that we're gonna have um, Ryu targeting Gara at some point but this really could possibly lead into like a sand village rescue arc of some sort which i think could be pretty cool because it'll be a good idea i think to step out of konoha for a little bit um you know the hidden leaf's been used for quite some time uh like it's been getting attacked a lot in boruto so we don't want you know the next arc i feel like to be that i think we need to mix it up setting wise i think that'd be a good idea because technically we had konoha invaded just now we 
had it invaded with Ishiki. And I, I know we didn't really have it invaded in uh, the ending chapters of Boruto, you know, Naruto Next Generations. But we did have conflict within the village that was going on. So the setting was still there. So um, it'll just be good to see another setting, especially since Naruto's world has so much to offer. It really, really does. And I like it when we see other parts of the world and expand on, you know, the world building too. So um, hopefully we are heading in that route uh, to the Village of the Sand and uh, we'll see how things go from there. But I'm definitely excited. Um, definitely let me know, guys, too, how you guys are feeling about uh this chapter all in all i thought it was pretty good still boruto 2 blue vortex no misses another really good chapter here uh, i'm gonna give this one i think a i want to say eight to eight and a half out of ten again really good to great chapter uh keeping things consistent and this was a little different you know this was more of an interrogation move the story along kind of chapter and i like that i like chapters like this because you got to have chapters like this to keep your story going solid and to, you know, also have some developments. So just like last month, really good story chapter. Um, we're probably going to start getting, for the, for the people, you know, that want, you know, more action. We're probably going to start getting that, I want to say, more so in the next chapter. Because we're probably going to get the flashback of the Sand Village getting attacked, at least I'm assuming. So, we'll probably get some action next chapter. That should be cool. Um, but, all in all, yeah, I enjoyed the chapter. I definitely would be interested to hear what you guys thought of the chapter. So, let me know in the comments below. But, that's going to wrap up this one. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button. And subscribe to my channel if you guys are new. And, as always, I hope you guys have a good day or night whenever you guys are watching this video. I'm Rewind, and I'm out.